who are also acknowledged traditional owners on the, the land that the conference is being, being held today um, and pay respects to, to them and pay respects to elders past and present um, and, and, and acknowledge the fact that you guys are here and, and willing to, to listen to the stuff that's, that's happening around the place. Um, as Kevin, Kevin said, uh, my role as the CEO of Quake is, is very much about looking at supporting community control health services across Queensland, um, providing regular care uh, to, to our mob in many communities. Um, recent, start, I guess, recent data from, from our services, we've got, we've got around 27 um, organisations across Queensland um, and, and a network of around 60 clinics uh, that provide regular care. Through our services themselves, just to give a bit of a snapshot of, of Quake itself, through our services we, we capture about um, 70,000 Average social under people as our regular patients that come through our doors on a um, on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, so that's something fairly significant. It's about 45% of the actual population in Queensland that comes through our door. Um, so we certainly do see um, a fair few of our own mob and get a solid understanding of what what our mob uh, require and what do we need to do to, to to engage with with our mob on a regular basis to look at not only providing good quality care but then how do we continue to improve that process to make sure that we're we're getting better at refining our systems and, and, and the, the way that we do business to, to, to ensure that we're, we're ahead of the game, if you like. Um, essentially, we are providing care to the, to the most vulnerable community um, and those with the, the highest chronic disease, so we want to make sure we maintain a certain level of standard to, to support that. As a state peak body, um, there's, there's a few things, I guess, on, on our plate, but certainly it, it comes for, for us, it comes down to three critical things around the work that we do in building the capacity of our, of our sector. Um, the first one is, is around governance reform, and, and certainly there's been, and it's, and it's no, I guess it's no easy solution in terms of governance reform, but there's been lots of historical reasons and issues in relation to, to reasons why we need to change the way that we do business inside community control organisations. There's plenty of examples that we can highlight where the community control governance models haven't worked and haven't worked purely because they've shut the community out. Um, essentially, we've all been built, our organisations were built on the, on the premise that community control is about empowering the local community to be involved in decision making. Many of those organisations that walked away from that premise then started to get buggered up organisations and then started to do the wrong thing and went down the wrong path. So that's part of the governance reform process for us is making sure that we've got tighter controls and making sure that community have direct input into, into what's happening inside the space. Second component for us is around clinic reform and what we do to improve our organisational practices to ensure that we've got some effective and efficient services um, and making sure that we're, we're pro providing the best care we can. Um, and we continually do that, and, and I guess the evidence is, for us is, sh is showing that we're getting more and more people come to our clinics. Um, when we pick up nearly half the, half the population of Queensland coming to our clinics, where we don't exist in every corner of the state, makes a, demonstrates fairly significantly that we're, we are doing something right. Um, and we just need to continue to improve on that. We can't rest on our laurels. Um, the third and the, probably the most critical component for us, um, which is the thing that we want to talk about today, is around community engagement and what we do to engage with community. And there's, this, there's been this historical trend inside our organisations where we talk about community control, and just by virtue of being community control, we engage with community. Um, well, it's wrong. I can, I've, I've absolutely been challenging my own members and, and guys in our organisations across Queensland to say, just because you're community control doesn't mean you engage with your community. It is, it is wrong to build build your structure around that premise, you need to get out of the four walls that you exist to engage more with the community to make sure they're actually coming in and you're working with your community to know and understand what their needs are. Um, so that's, that's been a big shift and change inside, inside, I guess, what we have as the Quake Network. Um, and the important part of that whole community engagement process is as we're going through change and as we're implementing reform and as we're doing new things and, and changing our business to be more, more dynamic, the community is part of the process. They know and understand it. They have buy-in, and they can be leading the, the change as well. And they're, they're significant players in the decision making about that stuff. Um, some of the, the critical elements for us. I, now, forgive me. I've got a I've got my iPad sitting on my lap here because I did a PowerPoint, so I didn't bother about connecting it there. So I've got my notes sitting on this thing. Um, why do we engage? It's some really simple things, and it's no no different from from anything else that we do. Transparency, um, accountability, trust building relationships um, and getting that community understanding and intelligence. That's why we engage. It's really simple. It's not, it's not rocket science. Um, it's not anything different. It's not anything new. And it's no different from what you'd see in any textbook 
around some good solid community development work that needs to happen not only here but internationally. It is very much about building some solid trusting relationships, being open and transparent and making sure that community know and understand exactly what, what is going on inside organisations, why you're delivering a service, how you need to deliver a service and what's expected of you from government to deliver that service and then what do you need to do to ensure that community have input into that process. Some simple stuff. Um, the big change that we've undertaken, I guess, in the last, uh, certainly in the last two and a half years um, with our organisations is engaging community through information. Um, and this whole notion of the thing where we'd go out and just have yarns with our mob and say, look, this is what we're doing, this is how we're going, let's just have a yarn and sit down and have a cup of tea and, and a couple of pieces of cake and we'll be right, we'll walk out the door. It doesn't happen um, and it's, it's not effective, it doesn't work, purely because what we're doing is, is really just being patronising in the way that we approach our own mob. What we need to be doing is giving information to community about the purpose of the engagement. And we do that through data. And what we do in, in our services is, is collect data and information in relation to the health access that goes on through our, through our services on a day-to-day -day basis, which is why I can sit here and talk about the fact that we've got 70,000 average Tosh Islander people that are walking through our doors as regular patients, because every one of our services collects that information and then provides it back to the community so that they can then have conversations with not only their clients, but their local community that says, OK, in the past year, we've done 3,000 health checks. In the past six months, we've had 250 new patients walk through our door. It's providing that information back to community that then drives a real conversation because then the community knows and understands, OK, this is what you're doing. This is actually what you're funded to do. These are the activities you're implementing. This is how you're going to go about your business. And here are the things that we think as community we can engage in to support improvements in that practice. It really clearly defines the scope of the relationship. And that's, that's important because if you don't define the scope of the relationship, then you'll get things that are coming from left, right and centre all over the shop and they're never going to be meaningful to improving your business. The other thing that we've started to do around, we've started to do more of through our processes is about building organisational measures. So what are we doing around client feedback? Um, as simple as it is, many community control organisations over the last couple of years have never had a client feedback process. But it's something that is now seen as important to look at improving the efficiency and the quality of the service that goes on. If you build in a client feedback process, if you make it automated even better, um, if you can have some you know, a couple of computers sitting up, set up in your, um, in your patient waiting room where people can go on and do some quick click surveys you know, and understand what a simple client patient feedback is, even better. But it's about having that conversation, having that dialogue and providing some information to people so that they know and understand what is actually happening, they get a better understanding of the service and how they can engage about that whole process of quality. Um, the good thing about doing those sorts of things, which is something that we've learnt, um, certainly in the past couple of years, is about it enables us as a network, it enables us as a sector to look at comparing ourselves against national and international standards and trends for best organisational practice. Because that's important. Because when you look at providing quality care to the most vulnerable group and those with the highest burden of illness, if you can say that the care that you're delivering to that group is actually against or better than international standards of healthcare in primary healthcare provision, then that's saying something. Because then you don't get caught in the conversation, which has happened in the past, where people are walking through the doors and thinking, well, this is only a, an AMS, it's an Aboriginal, it's an Aboriginal service, so we're only going to get a half hour service because it's services for blackfellas. Doesn't happen because we're actually measuring ourselves against standards, we're setting the benchmark high about the quality of care we want to deliver and we're able to then relate that back to community to say, look, we are AGPAL accredited, we are ISO accredited, so we are actually assessing ourselves against some, some fairly significant standards. Um, really quickly, some of the things, I guess, not um, without going into too much further detail, what's not good practice for us? Engagement without purpose. Um, again, it comes back to that whole notion of you've got to have a purpose, you've got to have some intent, you've got to have You've got to know and understand your scope before you go and start talking to our communities about, about business and about the business that you want to undertake. Um, one thing we do see regularly, and I see regularly, um, is Indigenous staff leading the engagement process and go and having conversations with community, irrespective of who is delivering the service or what the organisation is. The organisation sending out Indigenous staff and those Indigenous staff are not even involved in the program that they're talking about. It is really patronising to communities. They're the sorts of things that happened in the past, we still see it today, but aren't good practice around how we better engage with communities. 
Um, the other thing that I'm, uh, that I'm really keen on and very critical about in relation to what we do, uh, purely because I do travel all across the state, and I have been to every location where we do have an AMS in Queensland, senior management engaging with community. Because when they can see that, when community see that the senior manager of the organisation that is delivering services in their community is engaged and is happy enough to have the conversation, then they know and understand they're actually going to, to get something decent. And they can have that, they can start to build a relationship direct with the CEO of the organisation or direct with the person who's responsible for the contract that's being delivered in their community. That is something that we're, that again, we do see a lot of, but we want to see less of it. Um, other bits and pieces, I guess, that we, as we talked about, is, is report carding. Um, a critical thing that we've started to implement in every one of our services across Queensland now is the whole process of pulling together some simple report cards. Each one of our community control health centres does an annual report card, and it is based on numbers of visits to GPs, based on numbers of health checks, based on numbers of new patients walking through the door, GP management plan. So it's very much about the activity that goes on in your organisation because it's very, very clear then for community to know and understand what they're engaging in. Because if you just put out a report and say, this is what we're doing, this is how we're going, and here's our newsletter, and look, there's a couple of good photos here too, looks nice and, nice and glossy, community do not know the scope of what you're trying to do and do not know and understand the scope of the contract that you've been provided from government to deliver a service. If you're putting it into some fairly simple formats about the activities that go on and about the improvements you're making and about the things you're doing, then it becomes very, very clear and you build a relationship based on openness, transparency and trust and you can continue to have that engaged conversation about improving quality over time. Um, the important part of that, I guess, uh, to end on is, is certainly that when you're providing the information, you're building the capacity of the community to engage in an ongoing conversation and if the community are comfortable with where things are going, they're able to provide feedback, um, particularly to ensure that you're looking at continual improvement processes and most importantly, you're able to share the success with community as well. So when you do achieve some really decent outcomes, when you get some good things happening, and, pe and you are getting some wins in relation to the stuff that's going on in your community and with the people you're providing the service to, you can share that as a success story. And not only you get the benefits as the provider of a service, but the community themselves can own it and they want more of it and they want to be engaged in it and they're able to celebrate it and start to tell everyone else about what's going on in that space.